Right. Right. Are we, are we recording? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where where is it that you work? Okay. Macy's. Okay. Right. No. 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 Oh, the the data center. Okay. All right. 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 Right, right, right. Got it. All right. Our topic today is going to be on maintaining state. And again, remember the whole idea of maintaining state is to pass data from one page to another. And we've already been doing that uh, in a couple of ways. We do that, for example, whenever we have a form submit to itself, right? Because if we create a form that has a text box on it and we click the button, when that page reloads, it remembers the value that was in there. All right? So two different requests, and it still remembers the value. It held that value. That's an example of maintaining state. Because remember, there has to be some mechanism to do that because there's nothing in the mechanism, or I'm sorry, there's nothing in the HTTP protocol that allows that to happen. All right? So um, there has to be, you know, a mechanism somewhere. And, and that's implemented through uh, ASP.NET's view state. And there's hidden fields in the form you can see that, that probably have something to do with it. The other way that we've seen doing it is with uh, the query string. All right, with the query string, for example, what we can do is, um, you know, when we've made a link from one page to another, we passed some data on the query string. And in effect, we're passing data from one page to the other. We're saying, hey, they, they clicked on this professor or this student and therefore pull up their student. So that's another example. Um, and, you know, it's not like this is a, um, you know, this is definitely a, a mix and match thing. You know, you do what's appropriate for the particular task. It's not like when you choose to maintain state, you're going to do it this way or that way. You know, you're going to use a variety of techniques depending on, on uh, circumstances. Now, those are all examples of passing data like between two pages, page one to page two, for example. But let's consider if we wanted to make a site multilingual. All right, let's consider what we'd do. All right, we'd probably have something like a, a, a checkbox, uh, not a checkbox, but radio buttons or a drop down, um, probably in a certain position on the page. You know, uh, we'd want it the, the same consistent on every page. So we'd probably build something like that into the master page that would allow to choose between English or French, let's say. All right, let's say we got a job uh, up in Quebec, so we have to do everything in two languages, English and French. All right, um, so we'd probably have the UI thing on the master page because on every page you want the option to, to switch between. But we wouldn't want the person to have to go back on every single page and say, I want French, I want French, I want French. You know, we would want to be able to, you know, on, make that selection once and have it remember it from every page on. All right. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that uh, through the use of what's called a session variable. All right. Uh, First of all, when I say a session, does anyone, like, can anyone define what a session is or maybe describe what a session is? Pardon me? Things going, Things going on, okay. Login. Yeah, a, a, a login. Anyone want to add to that? It, it's a browser session. In other words, if I open up a browser, go to a page, log in to Angel, do my thing, then close the browser window, that's a browser session. If I go in and open up again a, a browser, log on, that's another browser session. All right? So, what creates a browser session? What creates a browser session? This might be splitting hairs a little bit. But really, as soon as you access 
a page on a server, you've created a browser session. Now, whether it remembers anything about you or not is another question, right? But when you go, I guess when, it, when things really get interesting is when you ask the session to remember something about you, all right? So if you go to Angel, that probably starts a browser session on the server, but nothing interesting is going on until you go log in, right? Then it, then it actually remembers something about you, all right? If you're just visiting the help files or whatever, yeah, strictly speaking, there's a browser session going on, but really doesn't matter much because it's not remembering anything about you. So if I log into Angel, let's say, a session is created. When does that session die? When does that session terminate? Okay. So when I close the browser window? Okay. Uh, the statement was made, uh, which is essentially correct, when it either times out or you explicitly log out. Uh, that's an important thing to remember because uh, a web server only knows that it's gotten a request from you. It doesn't know that it hasn't gotten a request from you. Uh, or, or put differently, l let me rephrase that. If I access a web server on Angel and I go to Angel and I log in and I start grading stuff, then I get bored and I go to CNN.com or whatever. LC's Angel web server doesn't know that I've ac accessed another website. All it knows is that I have not made any requests to it lately. All right? So it doesn't know that I'm on another website to terminate. All right? Likewise, if I shut down my machine, it doesn't know that I've shut down my machine. If I close my browser window, it doesn't know that I've closed down my browser window. All it knows is I made a request at this time and I have not made any requests since. It doesn't know what I'm doing. I could be reading someone's term paper and trying to decide how to grade it. You know, it might take a little while. You know, might, if it's a long paper, it might take me you know, 20 minutes to read it and, and think about it and go back and grade it. And then I enter my grade in and save it. Then I've made another request. All right? But it doesn't know if that's the case, that I'm just grading something and taking a long time doing it, or I've gone home for the day, all right, my computer has crashed, I've gotten bored and gone to another website. It doesn't know any of those things happen. It just knows if it's gotten a request, and then it also knows if it hasn't gotten any requests since then. So, Associated with, with a web server and, and with a session specifically is a default session time, default session timeout. And what that will do is it will terminate your session after X amount time of, of inactivity. So if it has not gotten any requests for you in a certain time frame, then your session is terminated. Now, there's problems with making that timeout too short and too long, all right? What are the problems of making the timeout for a session too short? Irritate the user. Irritate the user. How so? Yeah, right. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I've just seen the 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 the, the icon, and I think that's probably the worst named software product I've ever seen because I hate paper cuts. Why would you call your Why would you call your software? Well, you know, why don't you you know call your software? Uh, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, deep puncture wound, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, paper cut, ugh. But anyhow, I digress. Uh, but yes, yes, if, if it timed out too quickly, then you might really be doing something. Like I said, grading a paper, taking a test, studying some notes on the screen. And then when you go to do something else, oh, your session's terminated. It forgot who you were, and you have to log back in again. So that would be annoying, all right, to, to have to do that, all right? And that's actually happened to me in our, in our web-based email system here. You know, I've gotten into writing a long email, really thinking about what I'm saying, go to send it, and it's time me out. And it's no fun whatsoever, all right, believe me, to, to do that. Um, now. So that's the problem with making it too short. You don't want to make it too short. All right. What's the problem with making the session timeout too long? Security. Okay, security issues. Uh, how so? Well, um, yeah, if a person forgets to log out, they walk away. Somebody else can come along 20 minutes later and they're still logged on. You know, 
exactly. If, for example, uh, you know, take the take the labs here. You know, if if you logged on to Angel or whatever, walked away, you know, someone eight o'clock at night, if the session was long enough, could come in. Oh, they're still logged on and go do something on your account. So if you walked away and forgot to log out, then there's that security issue of you know. You, you have the vulnerability, especially like in a shared environment, uh, like, like in our labs or a library or whatever, of people going and accessing your account information. So that, that's one issue with it. Can you think of another issue? Uh, I'm not sure how the sessions would work going, towards, going back to your server. And uh -huh. you have, like a ton of sessions open that people never log on. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think you're definitely hitting on, on the other disadvantage of making it too long. Making it uh, if you make the sessions too long, if it takes too long to time out, you're you're putting too much of a load on your server. You're having your server remember more stuff than it needs to know, and you're chewing up server resources. You know. So in other words, um, someone that just popped on the Angel to see if they've gotten any email, if there was like a eight hour session timeout for example. They go in, log on to Angel, all right, check, uh, no email, boom, close the window. The server doesn't know that they've closed the window, right? You know, the server's only notified when a request is made to it. It's not notified when I've closed the window or access another site or shut my computer down or anything like that. So if the session timeout was too long, here I check my email for 30 seconds and it's going to remember that session for, you know, some ridiculously long period of time, eight, you know, eight hours in my hypothetical situation. So you want to find that sweet spot. And again, it depends on the particular application you're talking about and how big of a pain it is. You actually can uh, change it per session. So for example, uh, if Angel were smart, it would have a different timeout uh, for a session if you're just logging in versus if you've logged in and gone into test mode, for example. So like if you're going to take a test, uh, you know, the session time, the session timeout period should be at least as long as the test, right? Because you could be typing all that in and not actually talking to the server again until you press submit, all right? So that's what I mean by a session. And one thing to keep in mind is if you're storing basic fields like integers, you know, what they would call in Java primitive fields, integers, strings, booleans, it's not that big a deal. You actually can store objects as well as session variables, and you can store objects as a session variable, but that actually tends to chew up a lot of resources, so you kind of want to avoid that, all right, uh, because again, that will, you know, those take up a lot more resources than, than the typical primitives. All right. So a session variable allows us to store, and for the purposes of this example, and, and again, as, as a suggestion, we're only going to store basic things like strings or, or booleans or, or whatever. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my application uh, to have a master page that's going to have, um, say, a drop-down on it that will, that will allow the user to choose between English and French. And then we're going to change the pages to have the text change depending on what language they've selected. And again, we don't want to uh, be a pain and, and force the user to change their language or, you know, to set the language on every page. So we're going to want to remember it from page to page to page. All right. So, and why did I do that? I just closed out of Visual Studio. Let me go and reopen it. Sure. We do session variables. Mm -hmm. So we know if we have a request, mm -hmm. the response will then go to the server, right? And they're back and forth. Would that be a security issue that is limited for all our session if we have session data? Do the session variables live on the server? No, that, that's not an issue. It's, it, the, the security risk comes into what, what was said before. The fact that on the client side, if, you, if the session doesn't become expired, then someone could you know, do that. But I mean, there's no way you can get into 
you know, there's no way you can get into the web server and see the values for the session variables if that's what you're concerned of. So yeah, that, that you know, uh, security risks would come in other places. You know, I mean, you wouldn't, for example. You know, if you're going to hack a system, you'd hack the system looking for the database to pull the password out. You wouldn't hack trying to grab it from session variables somewhere because those really wouldn't be accessible to you. All right. Okay. So let's go in and let's create our master page. Um, and what I'm going to do is say new. master page all right and what I will do is not going to go crazy with the design of this page because I'm we're focusing on something else I'm going to put a label on here and I'm going to go and put that in an h1 tag All right. Then I'm going to go put um, my drop down here that will allow the selection of English or French. I had two years of high school French, so that doesn't mean anything. I don't remember a word. No, I remember a word, but not too many. already showing off. All right, so we'll put this on here. I'm going to make it auto post back, which means what? Which means as soon as I change it, I'm going to hit the server. And then what I'm going to do is double click on that. I'm going to put code in here that will say Session language equals drop down list one dot selected value. All right. So what I'm doing is when they've changed that, when they've changed uh, that drop down. I'm calling this line of code and I'm creating a session variable. This is how you create a session variable. The word session and then in parentheses you have um, uh, the, the name of the session variable. All right. Sometimes this is called like a hash table or a hash array. Uh, you know a regular array has a index right of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. This kind of thing, the session is like a hash table or a hash array where you give not a index, but you give a name and it pulls a value out. So for example, I can pull the, uh, uh, think of that language almost as a subscript to my session variables. Which session variable I want? The language one. And instead of saying sub zero, sub one or whatever, we give a name to it just so that it's easier to remember. So we're going to go and do that. Now, the other thing I'm going to do in here is in the page load event, I'm going to say if it's 
Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, anytime we want to refer to that session variable, we use that. Multiple session variables, correct. So I could store language and uh, a color scheme, for example, if we wanted to switch the theme of the page, that maybe we could, we could remember what theme they've picked and change it from page to page to page. All right. So I'm looking to see if there's anything present, and if it is, I'm going to set the value of the dropdown Down list one, selected value equals that. All right. So what that's doing is that's remembering it from page to page to page, and it's setting the value of that drop down as I go and enter that page. All right. Now, let's go in and let's make uh, a couple of pages. Actually, I'm going to do this first. I'm going to go and I'm going to change the value of this label to say, oops. Now change it to say, welcome to my site. Except, if they're French, I want it to say something else, right? Now here's where the programmability of these different controls comes in really nice, right? Because I can go in and programmatically change the value of that label. Or not, I'm sorry, not the value of the label, the text of that label. So, I can say welcome to my site in English, and based on the value of the session variable, I can say something else in French. from English to French, from English to French, welcome to my site, bienvenue sur mon site, I think you would pronounce it. I'm, you know, I'm friends on Facebook with my high school French teacher. I should have invited her here today. And what I can do is I can test the value of that session variable. So if session language equals fr, then label one dot text equals the French word for it. All right. So let's go and make my default page and let's make sure that that works first. So let's go make, make our home page because we can't test a, a master page just by itself. We have to have something that, that uh, an actual page that clones from it. So let's go in and create a new page new file, web form called default.aspx. We're going to select master page and I'll click add. Okay. And right now I won't put anything in there. All right. I, I will in a second, but right now I won't. Um, and let's go and pull this up. So, if I go here, Pull it up. It should pop up, and because I haven't set any session variables yet, it should pull up um, in English. All right, that's what I made the default language of this. Right. 
something's obviously wrong because that's there, but the label isn't showing. So let's go and take a look. Ooh, no reference. I know what the problem is. Grab the wrong thing.
I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. And I apologize for this because I, uh, there was something I didn't consider on this. Um, what I will do is let's go up to lab now. You guys can work on it. I'll get the example straightened out and I'll post the example when I've completed it. All right, because there really is only a couple more things I need to do. I'm just, I'm drawing a blank on some things and just need to kind of sit down and no sense watching me Google stuff. So we'll go up to lab. You can, you can start working on your assignments. I will post and we will review that when I'm finished. Sorry about that.